Hello, everybody. I'm Terry Owens with the District Department of Transportation, better known as DDOT, and welcome to DDOT Delivers. Each week, we take you inside the agency for a look at what we're doing to serve residents and visitors of the District of Columbia. Today, we'll be discussing a new pilot program for buses on H and I streets. The lead planners on the project are Megan Kanegi and Raka Chowdhury. Megan is in the Planning and Sustainability Division. Raka is a planner in the Trans Transit Delivery Division. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Terry. Thank you, Terry. No, I really appreciate you getting in here. I know your schedules are busy. You're always up to your eyeballs in something, and pulling away for even as little as a half an hour can be tough. So I, I really appreciate it. Megan, why don't you tell us what you are planning for these two very busy transit corridors? Sure. So we are planning to do a pilot this summer that's going to run from June 3rd through September 27th, and we are piloting bus lanes in the right-hand lane of H and I Street um, that will operate during the AM and PM peaks. Um, And we're gonna paint these lanes red, and we're gonna hope that they um, help to make people's bus rides a little bit faster and a little bit more reliable during these peak periods. Um, for what are really some of our busiest um, bus corridors in the entire district. I was going to say, Raka, how were these corridors chosen for this pilot? So we started thinking about it uh, around the time when Vermont decided they were going to close down the yellow-blue line over the summer mm-hmm. uh, and the 11Y, which is uh, which partially covers that uh, route, comes into downtown and uses H&I. So we decided we'd use that opportunity and go in and do a pilot at the same time. And and you have a defined time frame. Why is that important? It's over the summer, so school's out. Uh, Traffic's not as crazy. It's a little, traffic volumes are a little lower than normal. So it's a good time to go in and pilot and see how things uh, work out. We kind of extended it past the summer so we can also see how it works once people come back into town and have some time to get used to it. Megan, can you give us an idea of the number of people you're talking about impacting through this process? Yeah, sure. So um, like like we mentioned, there's lots and lots of buses on H&I Street, up to 70 buses an hour um, in the peak in portions of the corridor. Um, and those routes go all over the district. So um, up to 80,000 people a day ride buses that are on routes that are on H&I Street for a portion of that trip. Um, We have looked at this before. I wanted to piggyback on Raka's response. We've studied H&I Street before. Mm -hmm. WMATA has studied H&I Street before. There's been lots of need that we've demonstrated over the years. Um, These are are very slow um, speeds that buses are currently experiencing in the peaks, um, sometimes slower than walking. So Mm. this is a great opportunity to use this um, Metro Rail shut down as a way to um, try to encourage people to get into the district and around the district um, using other modes. I was going to say, Raka, could you give us a, a better sense of just how bad the problem is over there and why you would look at something like this as a way to address a congestion or a traffic flow issue? Well, uh, I think the speeds are about 2.8 miles in the worst case scenario. And uh, there's right turning traffic. If you If you're out there in the evening, you're tr- your bus really doesn't move. And uh, I think 50 to 70 buses an hour is kind of enough of a need that we want um, buses um, to have their own dedicated lane. Uh, One thing that I think we forgot to mention is, uh, or we haven't mentioned yet, is it used to be what is going to be the bus lane is currently parking in the off-peak hours. And in the peak hours, it's used by cars to travel and buses will be using it instead of cars. So we are uh, keeping the time period the same to not impact anything and just try and get buses in and see how well they do. Okay, if you are just joining us, you are listening to DDOT Delivers, where we take you inside the district's Department of Transportation each week to try and give you a sense of all that we are doing to improve life for residents and visitors to the District of Columbia. Our guests today are Megan Kanegi, a transportation planner in DDOT's Planning and Sustainability Division, and Raka Chowdhury, who is a planner in our Transit Delivery Division. All right, so we're talking about a dedicated bus lane during the peak hours. That's morning rush. That's evening rush. We're talking about painting the street so it's clearly defined. Still, how do we enforce it? 
That's one of our biggest challenges, um, honestly. And Rock has been working tirelessly to try to line up support from all the different agencies that play an enforcement role um, across our district's roadways. So we have um, d a Department of Four Hire Vehicles. So we've pushed out um, messaging to taxis and Uber and Lyft um, operators to try to let them know it's coming, let them know that this bus lane is not a place that they can stop. Um, we have um, uh, pushed out um, information to MPD and DPW to let them know what's coming and listen and, and really enlist their support um, to really try to target this area. Um, and then we've also um, got some TCOs. We've got 12 TCOs who are going to be dedicated to the corridor. Um, enforcement is very critical to the success of this pilot, and we're counting on um, really the commitment from those agencies to help us make sure that this is successful. Um, and it's something that we hear a lot from from constituents and from um, residents is that, you know, uh, enforcement is an ongoing challenge. And so we're we're trying to address that, I think, um, with an interagency approach, um, and we're going to be monitoring it very closely. Yeah, and so we have these, we started holding bi-weekly calls with all these agencies. Uh, Metropolitan Transport, Transit Police is another one, so MTPT is the fifth agency that's also helping us with enforcement and they'll help enforce bus zone compliance. Um, and so uh, we started holding bi-weekly meetings with them. We've been talking to them for the last three months, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll continue the calls once the pilot is in place as well, so to make sure that things continue to go well. Um, this is our second pilot bus lane project. We did it on Rhode Island Avenue last year during the Safe Track shutdown. And um, what was interesting then was that um, we found that compliance was really poor and enforcement was the biggest issue. Uh, a couple of things that makes this slightly different and a little more hopefully better for uh, bus lane compliance is the number of buses are a lot more. Um, Rhode Island Avenue had about 20 buses an hour. We have 60 to 70 here. Uh, and then we have metro buses instead of coach buses that were happening on Rhode Island Avenue. But we did not have this level of TCO engagement or, com or uh, partner agency engagement on the project. So we are hoping with all of these agencies and the, and the bids, uh, the downtown bid and the Golden Triangle bid downtown. So uh, we'll have a lot of eyes on the street. And now, will the bus lanes be solely for buses or can other entities also use them? Right. So per DC law, um, other entities can also use them. So it's um, metro buses um, or transit buses, uh, charter buses, school buses, um, taxis that are in active service, passenger service. They're not allowed to stop and pick up drop off, but they can use the lane. Um, and then also vehicles that are um, making a right turn can approach and enter the lane 40 feet in advance of the intersection. How about bicycles? And yes. bicycles. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Yes. Good. And the big difference here, I think, also is that you are going to have the lanes painted. So they're yes, clearly indeed. identified as uh -huh. bus only lanes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. And, and the district has found um, through our um, existing bus lanes on Georgia Avenue that the red paint really helped with compliance. So we did a, um, a study where, you know, we had the lane in operation for a month before the red paint was, was applied on Georgia Avenue and then compared um, with a month after and, and found that that um, really helped with, with keeping people out and, and visually communicating to drivers. Are there yeah. cities of similar size that have used dedicated bus lanes where they've proved to really be effective? Boston. Yeah, Seattle, Austin, San Francisco, New York. Um, this is something we're really seeing across the country um, is that um, a lot of cities are investing in this infrastructure. Um, you know, we, we pay a lot of money um, towards WMATA to operate these buses and they're currently operating very slowly. And so we're trying to, you know, get a little bit better value for, for our investment. And, and we, um, the district, as, as we control the roadways, you know, that's, that's the role that we can help pay to support that service. I've got to take okay. a break here. Hold that thought. We're going to jump out and come right back. You're listening to DDOT Delivers on 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov. I'm Terry Owens. Uh, we're back in just a moment. Stay with us. 
Welcome back, everybody. This is D. Delivers. I'm Terry Owens. Our guests today are Raka Trowdry. She's a transportation planner with the agency, and Megan Kanegi, also a transportation planner. We're talking about the new dedicated bus lanes pilot project on HNI Street and how this project is expected to improve the transportation flow on that very busy corridor. And I wanted to, before we jump in, just get some sense of the history of dedicated bus lanes in the district. Raka, you talked about the Rhode Island project. Is that the only time we've had dedicated bus lanes in the district? Well, Georgia Avenue is existing. That's four blocks on Georgia Avenue, and that's painted red. And we found enforcement to be really good on that, or comparatively. Uh, Rhode Island Avenue was the second one uh, that we did a pilot for. And then 16th Street bus lanes has been in the planning phases, and we should be implementing it pretty soon. I think end of next year. Yeah, we also actually did have bus lanes um, on 7th and 9th Streets through downtown. Um, they are not painted red. They have very limited markings and signage, and they have not been enforced. And so I think in learning through that experience, the district is finding that you know the red paint, um, proper signage, um, coordination with enforcement um, are all keys to mm-hmm. making sure that those are uh, successful. And this bus pilot is going to impact both H and I. How did you decide to use two quarters as opposed to just one? Yeah, these, these uh, streets are one-way couplet. So um, H Street is one-way eastbound and I Street is one-way westbound um, between New York and Pennsylvania Avenues. And so buses um, that are traveling on one are generally traveling on the other. So um, if you're going to try to speed up one direction um, for part of the route, you know, we're generally trying to... to help in both directions. Um, and it, it also makes sense, I think, the vehicular traffic, um, you know, people are traveling sort of in one direction or the other during the peaks. And so, um, you know, generally we see a little bit more traffic on H Street in the morning and a little bit more traffic on I Street in the evening. And so this sort of allows us to benefit over both time periods. Okay, you talked about uh, a project, a pilot project that's going to run from June through September. Raka, what kind of metrics do you look for that help you determine the success of something like this? Yeah, we're looking at a bunch of performance metrics uh, for the, to see how the bus lanes do. We look at uh, bus reliability, um, mobility of traffic and buses. Uh, we'll also be looking at bus lane compliance and then safety because One thing that we keep talking about um, internally is that uh, as part of our Vision Zero goal, the more people we can get on transit, the fewer people are driving. And so we are looking at a few safety metrics as well. So yeah, the four. Okay. Uh, Of course, as much as we want to get people out of cars and onto public transit, there are those out there who are going to continue to drive, and they say, why should I be losing travel lanes to buses only, and you're going to impact my commute? Uh, Megan, I'm sure you've heard that. How do you respond? Yeah, well, we're, we're hoping that this will actually make H&I work better for everybody. And the reason that we're, um, you know, hoping for that is that given the volume of buses that are out there today, there's not very much um, through vehicle traffic that's using those right-hand lanes. Um, we also are hoping that by having um, extra dedicated enforcement out there, we can really cut down on the illegal parking and loading that happens sometimes during our rush hours in the curb lanes, whether it's on the bus lane side or the opposite side. So that will you know, sort of make sure we have all the capacity that's out there available. Um, we're also going to be monitoring the pilot for um, traffic operations and see how things are working. And so you know, we have some spots that we know we have high turn volumes. We know that vehicles are not able to always make those turns in a timely fashion because of the pedestrian volumes. You know, they have to wait for people to cross. And so um, that may have an impact on the bus lane operation as those right turners are using the bus lane to make that turn. So we're going to be watching that and, and we may be recommending if this pilot is successful and extended through the fall and beyond some you know turn restrictions or dedicated turn phases or other signal timing changes that might help to benefit all traffic that's moving through the corridor. Raka, talk about the uh, collaboration with WMATA that's gone into pulling this thing off. Of course, um, we control the roads, but WMATA controls the buses. So yeah. what kind of uh, talks have there been with them and what are they hoping to see come out of this? So WMATA has been working with us. They, uh, they call into our interagency calls and they are very excited about this because their bus operations will be better. Um, they are helping us with a lot of the data collection to evaluate the performance. So they'll be sending us all the numbers for what the travel times are, what the travel time reliability is. 
uh, and then uh, we have shared plans and the signage plans with Vermata so they can train their operators to use the bus lanes. They're mm -hmm. also helping support us in outreach to riders. So they have, um, you know, a list of uh, all the people who've registered their smart trip cards who are riding the buses frequently on these routes. And so they're going to be helping us to send out email messages, encouraging those riders to fill out a survey asking them how their ride was. And you probably can't underestimate the importance of education in this process, not mm -hmm. only for the transit users, but for the motorists who use that corridor. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, we're trying to really get the word out a number of different ways. Um, you know, we've been communicating with the ANCs, with the bids, with um, key stakeholders in the area. We're also going to be, um, we have little tip cards that we'll be placing on um, people's uh, windshields who are parked along the corridor, letting them know that this is coming. Um, we mentioned the e-blast to the taxi yeah. and Uber and Lyft operators. Um, we've been, you know, trying to get it out through official DDOT channels. Through Wamada's help, um, through our GoDC Go um, marketing and outreach team, we'll be doing some some press that way as well. So um, we hope everybody hears about it and, and hope everybody um, is able to provide us feedback about how it's working for them. Well, it will be very noticeable for people who drive that quarter. Uh, that uh, red paint is going to go yeah. down and uh, uh, folks will know it's there. And we just have to encourage people to um, honor yeah. uh uh, honor the the lanes during uh, the morning and evening peak uh, talk about impact mm -hmm. uh, of course parking's always a concern uh what kind of impact are we going to see on parking up with this there's actually no impact on parking um so this is these lanes are currently rush hour restricted so there is not parking allowed during these times um so we are you know going to be looking at how the buses are performing during these times and also during the shoulder periods there's the potential that there may be you know, recommendations DDOT would make in the future that would expand the operations of the bus lanes. But um, for now, no changes to parking. All right. You are listening to DDOT Delivers on 96.3 HD4 and dcradio.gov. I'm Terry Owens. We're in studio with Raka Chowdhury and Megan Kanegi, both are transportation planners with the District Department of Transportation. And we're talking about a huge project on H and I streets that are designed to bring some dedicated bus lanes to the district in a way that will hopefully improve traffic flow for uh, the buses and for uh, the transit users who, uh, who ride the those corridors. Um, Raka, we can't talk enough about the need to try and improve what buses are doing to get through the district as we try and get people out of cars. Um, talk about all that DDOT is doing to try and sensitize people to the need to get out of single occupant vehicles and to try transit. Trying to think of what else we are doing. I know with uh, curbside enforcement, we are trying to do some graphics and videos to remind people to park properly. That bus zones shouldn't be used for parking and pickups and drop-offs because if a bus doesn't pull in uh, parallel to the curb, a person with uh, in a wheelchair cannot board or alight from a bus. So we are working on things like that. Uh, different. Uh, ideas like that. Uh, we do have the bus transformation project that Vermata is doing. And so DDOT's been participating in that and there are a few open houses coming up. But uh, I think uh, right now, other than our um, social media, we really need to get the message across because our, um, our metro rail network is not dense enough to serve transit throughout the district. We need to intersperse it with uh, a very good uh, and reliable bus uh, transit network. And uh, we are working on getting that message across. I know Megan's working on a whole bus priority program for DDOT. And so that is, uh, as that program grows, we hope to get the message out a lot more. Yeah, I think um, one of our goals is to try to think a little bit more strategically about how we're delivering bus lane projects and, and how we're connecting those with all the different elements that are necessary to make those projects successful. So like we talked about, we have 16th Street that'll be delivered hopefully by mid-2020. Um, and we're sort of, you know, wanting to do the planning for what comes next. Um, what part of the district do we focus on next? What's the timeline for delivering these projects? Can we reduce it down to you know, two or three years from start to finish so people can really see some changes out there. Um, how do we layer on enforcement? How do we layer on the way that people are boarding the bus to really reduce the time that that takes so we reduce the overall trip time? Um, how do we brand this? How do we market it to really make it a, an attractive, reliable mode for people to take that they can depend on? And I think that's what we're hearing from people is, 
you know, um, we have good service that's out there, but they can't always depend on it and, and know exactly how long it's going to take. So we're really, that's a focus for us. We want to grow um, this program, as Raka mentioned, to really make sure that we can deliver these projects quickly and make sure that they're comprehensive in, in making sure that the ride is better for our customers. And you are listening to DDOT Delivers. We'll take a quick break back in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. This is DDOT Delivers on 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov. I'm Terry Owens. Our guests today are Raka Chowdhury and Megan Kanegi, both the transportation planners with the District Department of Transportation. And we've been having a great conversation about a pilot project that DDOT is embarking on this summer that should make a big difference for people who use the bus system on either H or I Street as we implement uh, dedicated bus lanes, particularly during the morning and the evening rush hour specifically, and hopefully we're going to improve tr uh, traffic flow, uh, and uh, what are we, 70 buses an hour during the peak periods yeah. down there? So, Yes, this is uh, one of our heaviest bus corridors in the district, um, if not the heaviest on certain blocks, so lots and lots of buses from all over the district and all over the region are converging on downtown on H and I streets, and we're hoping to make their uh, trip a little bit faster and a little bit more reliable. Not long ago, we were in here talking about the K Street Transit Way and all that it hopes to bring to, to that quarter. So DDOT really is taking a number of steps to try and improve uh, uh, traffic flow. You talked about the traffic signal prioritization project. Yeah, so that's something that we've been working with WMATA on for a number of years. We got a TIGER grant to um, implement transit signal priority um, on just under 200 intersections across the district um, and, and the way that that works is that it can you know give an early green or truncate the red um, when there's a bus approaching um, to help them get through the intersection just a little bit faster um, so we've been monitoring that with WMATA and we're and we're looking to make some tweaks to make sure that that's working as best it can for for buses do you know if we'll see that on H and I um, I think we do have some locations on H and I but for this pilot we are just um, putting the lanes in, seeing how it's working, and then we may be making some recommendations for, for signal adjustments going forward. Now, I think you mentioned that the, you weren't starting from scratch with this project, that this had been studied before. Yes, that's right. A number of times. Yes. <laughs> back, in, back in 2013, WMATA, in, in support um, with the district, um, completed an H&I bus lane study where they looked at a couple of different alternatives, um, including bus lanes on H&I, including contraflow bus lanes. Um, and then the district also looked at a contraflow bus lane on H Street, which concluded in 2017. Um, we are looking to implement this pilot as a way to make some forward progress and really see how things work so that we can adjust them, learn from it, um, and get some benefit out to, to transit users. Now this pilot will run through September. How long will it take you to evaluate the information that you glean from this and the agency make a decision about whether or not this is something that you continue going forward with? Well, we'll be doing it on an ongoing basis. So we, will, we are doing uh, observations right now for before and then uh, next week we'll be out in the field as well doing observations and then in the middle of the uh, pilot period, June and August, we'll be doing, we'll be looking at uh, metrics. And so it'll be an ongoing evaluation and we'll know how it's doing before the project ends. And uh, I think we'll have a report out in the next three months after the, pro after the project ends. Yeah, we, we hope to be able to, to start to make preliminary assessments of how it's doing because we need to plan for what happens after the pilot ends. You know, this, this red yeah. paint just doesn't disappear overnight um, as soon as, you know, the clock strikes midnight on September 27th. And so we want to make sure that we have a good plan in place um, for how things are going to transition afterwards, whether that's keeping the, the lanes in place, whether that's taking them out, whether that's adjusting operations. You, you mentioned capturing data before this pilot begins, and I think that's something that a lot of people take for granted. It's important that you've got a good base of knowledge that you're working right. from. Say more about that. Well, uh, I know we, uh, we are going out on site on three days of this week, so tomorrow, day after, and the day after that. We are going out, uh, we, uh, we have people going out to walk the corridor, observe what traffic is doing, whether there are how many vehicles are turning right at intersections, and then also uh, illegal parking, what's going on with parking. Um, and then day after, we are doing the driving, right? We are, so we are also driving the corridor um, from end to end and back and forth for three hours 
to kind of get an idea of how much, uh, what the time, average time is in a car. And then we'll see how that changes once the bus lanes come in. Well, so, this, is, this is going to be an exciting project, and we're going to continue to follow it throughout the summer and provide updates where necessary and certainly be talking it up on social media. We've only got a few minutes left, though, and I've got to get to my favorite segment of the show, and that's where we drop the veil. We go behind the scenes and learn a little bit about you guys and, and how you arrived at the roles that you're in today. Megan, we were talking on the way over here, and you said this is not your first stint at DDOT. That's right. I was at DDOT back in 2010 as an intern in the bicycle and pedestrian program, helping to um, convert the 15th Street cycle track, which was one way um, at the time into a two-way bike facility, um, as well as doing some safe routes to school planning and the Capital Bike Share launch event. If you remember those photos of all of those little red bicycles lined up beautifully um, behind the director and then they got ridden off into the sunset for their inaugural ride, I was the intern behind the logistical organization of all of those red bikes. So at what point did you decide transportation was for you? Um, you know, I have a civil engineering um, undergrad degree and um, wanted to learn more. Um, and I got into a program that was transportation focused, um, transportation engineering and transportation planning. And so it sort of just happened that way. I love working in the field, though. It helps me make a positive impact on my community. I live in the district. I'm raising my family in the district. and. It's important to me that people are able to get around safely and efficiently, um, whether, you know, out of a car or in one. All right. Raka? Wow. Your journey to do oh, that. Oh, wow. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> it's a journey from India to Ohio to D.C. Um, so I got to D.C. in 2003 after my grad school. And, uh, and um, yeah, I lived in the district right from the beginning. I worked in the public sector for the city of Alexandria, worked on the Crystal City Potomac Yard Transitway, which right now is the only dedicated transitway in the region. Um, and then I moved over to the private sector, worked a lot with Vamata and bus planning. And uh, yeah, and then I wanted to work where I lived. So I wanted to work for the uh, for the district. You know, we try and use this segment to encourage people to think about DDOT as a place to work. And mm -hmm. so often people have no idea how to get in, what kind of training you need to get here. And uh, I think there's a little bit of something for everybody there, no matter your background. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, for planners, people generally have a master's in planning or, or a related field, but I think there's um, a lot of folks who've come at it from different angles, have different backgrounds, and, and we benefit from that diversity. Yeah, and we also often have a lot of policy positions where you don't really have to come in with the planning background as long as you have a good understanding of policy issues and how to work with it, um, and you read well and you understand, have good comprehension. It's, uh, yeah, I think people, we often have people who come with an English background or geography background. So a lot of, lot of different fields. But uh, well, ladies, thank work, you yeah. so much for making time for us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're excited about this pilot project on H&I Street. It's a dedicated bus lane coming in. Look for the red paint and uh, honor the system, if you will. It's uh, morning and afternoons. Uh, we're asking you to stay out of those lanes so we can try and get the buses moving through the district more efficiently so that people who are using public transit can get where they need to go in a timely way. My guests today have been uh, uh, Megan Kanegi and Raka Chowdhury. They're transportation planners at the District Department of Transportation. I'm Terry Owens. I look forward to having you join us here again next week for another edition of DDOT Delivers. Have a great day everybody.